Hello, uh, welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley. And uh, in today's class, we're going to continue, as we are at this time slot, Monday through Friday, looking at phrasal verbs. Okay, and today, uh, uh, most especially and specifically, we're going to look at phrasal verbs that have something to do with sports and activities. Uh, these are verbs we often use when we're talking about leisure time activities. Hello, Anna. Welcome, welcome. Hello, teacher. <laughs> Hello, teacher. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Good <laughs> afternoon to you. <laughs> okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, okay. Okay, we've had some other students join the class. Hello, Zingyu. Welcome. Hi, teacher. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm fine. I have done three lessons for my students. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I have done five, six lessons for my students so far. This is number seven. <laughs> um, you are full of energy. Uh, I'm full of some things in you. <laughs> mm. I don't you know. Are younger than me. I don't, you I don't are know. younger than me. Not sure that energy is the correct object noun of that sentence, but I'm certainly full of something. Okay. Fair enough. Paco, how are you today? Hi, Paco. Hello, teacher. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, welcome to the class. Thank you. Oh, okay. Here we go. We're going to wrestle with those phrasal verbs again. Today, uh, phrasal verbs, uh, commonly we're talk, talking about sports and recreation. Uh, all right, a little bit specialized phrasal verbs, but as always, we'll talk about alternate, uh, alternate definitions, and we'll be learning a lot of phrasal verbs, no doubt. So we're going to do this by looking at these fill-in-the-blank exercises. Why not get started? Why not? Uh, Anna, number one, go ahead and read the sentence, trying to fill the blank with one of the options below. Uh, okay. Uh, the team spent some time blank in preparation for the match. Um, warming up. Yeah, definitely warming up. All right. Stretching would be... Uh, a um, well, maybe stretching, maybe ex doing light exercises, right? At least warming up. Okay. Uh, all right. When you, when you see guys on the sidelines of a match, like jogging in place, they're warming up, so to speak. It would be very funny if they were running away, Anna. <laughs> what would that mean? The team spent some time running away. <laughs> Uh, uh, run, uh, running, running away is when you move uh, quickly, running quickly. <laughs> far, uh, far from, far from a, a place. That's right. So that would be ridiculous. <laughs> Retreat, <laughs> run away, hide. We don't want to play today. We're afraid. <laughs> yeah, that would be just silly. Okay, absolutely. Uh, spend some time doing in. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> doing in. Um, <laughs> what does it mean if you do someone in? <laughs> and first, first of all, you have to separate it. You do someone in. You can't really use it to do in someone. Does anybody know, Paco, Zinio, Anna, do you, if you do someone in, what that means? I no half idea. <laughs> no idea? If you do someone in, you kill them. <laughs> so mm. I, don't, I don't think you're... Uh, I don't think that's what they're talking about here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, and winning through, I think we talked about this yesterday. If you win through, you manage to to use your good qualities to push through. But they haven't even played the match, so 
that's that obviously can't have happened yet. Uh, okay, moving on. Zingyu, are you connected there? Is your can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's the number one? The correct answer was warming up. B, warming up. That's stretching and light exercise you do before you start more strenuous activity. You you warm up. Okay, and uh, two. Zingu, can you go ahead and read number two and give it a shot? Number two, the champion had a crowd of supporters to. <laughs> to cheer her up. Uh, cheer her on. Yeah. And cheer her on. <laughs> yeah. Cheer her on. Yay, go champ. Uh, okay. Cheering, you cheer for someone, or you cheer, uh, cheer for her, or cheer her on. Notice all of our options have the object noun the object pronoun, her, in the middle. Okay. Uh, I can't say she had a crowd of supporters to cheer on her. You cheer someone on, or something, a team, cheer the Red Sox on. Cheer on the Red Sox. Okay. Actually, I can say I like to, I'm going, I'm going to go cheer on the Red Sox. Uh, okay, fine. If it's a, Sometimes phrasal verbs do this weird thing here that we see going on here. If There are many phrasal verbs where if we use a pronoun, an object pronoun, it has to be an object pronoun, absolutely has to be, uh, it has to come in the middle. In other words, you have to separate the verb and the particle. However, if you use another noun, any other regular noun, you could uh, you could separate it or not separate it. Actually, this happens quite a bit. So this is another strange aspect of phrasal verbs you have to be aware of. Sometimes that pronoun has to go in the middle. Uh, okay. The other options don't really make a whole lot of sense because if you bring someone around you wake them up from being unconscious, <laughs> which doesn't make sense, uh, or uh, possibly you can bring someone around to visit. You should bring your mother around to visit. I haven't seen her in a long time like that. That's possible, but neither one makes sense here. Uh, C, do her down. That, I guess, I think, I believe that is a British phrasal verb, but it's one Americans do not use at all. Americans never say this. I'm quite unfamiliar with it, but I believe it means to um, deride someone, put them down. Uh, Americans say put her down, which would mean to say bad things about her. Uh, okay. Uh, so there's a case where British and American phrasal verb, uh, sometimes it'll use the same verb but a different, different particle or preposition which becomes a particle, British and American, sometimes it's the opposite, sometimes it'll use the same particle but a different verb, here's a case. You put someone down in American English, you... You insult them. You're fat. You're ugly. You're stupid. That's those are put downs, which, by the way, can also be a noun. Uh, and they certainly didn't give her up. They didn't surrender her. That doesn't make sense. Somebody gives up, they surrender. So that makes no sense at all. Uh, okay. Uh, quick shout out and hello to Carmen. Hello, Carmen. Good morning, okay. Good morning to everybody in the room. <laughs> morning. Uh, okay, we'll get to you in a second. Number three, Paco. Could you try number three? 
Okay, I'm going. Right. The pond froze over and the villagers were able to skate on it. Very good. Very physical meaning for this particular phrasal verb. Yeah, very easy to figure out. The top of the pond froze over the whole top. Okay, um, sure. Makes uh, makes all the sense in the world. Paco, what if the pond caved in? <laughs> the pond caved in. Is when you make a pond? I don't know what it means. I don't know if a pond can actually cave in. Um, a cave caves in. It means that the ceiling, the top of the uh, the the top part of the cave falls down. Your your house can cave in. If your house caves in, the roof comes down to the floor. Many houses in Nepal caved in in the recent uh, earthquake. They just collapsed completely. Uh, all right, so I don't know how a pond possibly caves in. That's a pond could stretch out, I suppose. Paco, what if a pond stretched out? What would that mean? Stretch out? I don't know. It probably got wider. You stretch out your arms. Ah, you yawn and you stretch out your arms when you wake up in the morning. Okay, yeah. okay, Henderson. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay. And it snowed off. I don't even know what that means. That, that one makes no sense to me at all. Uh, you can be snowed in, but I don't know what snowed off is, so never mind that one. Okay, Carmen, number four. Teacher, I can help you. You can. Slow off. Yeah. Uh, you cancel something because of slow. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, must be a very British thing um, because uh, Americans use rained out or snowed out. We, we tend to use out. So there you go. There's another case where the verb is the same but the particle changes, British and American. All right. Yeah, because as an American, I've never heard this in my life. So, But thank you for that. I, I see the logic of it. Sure. Uh, okay. Carmen, how about number four? I want to get the garden tidy before winter before winter sets in. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Very similar to sets out. To set out is to start on a trip or something. You you set out, you begin. We uh, he started his career. He set out to make his first million dollars. Okay, he, he started. Um, winter sets in. We, we use sets in for things that winter doesn't happen, you know. Okay, it's 3 o'clock, it's fall. Oh, it's 4 o'clock, it's winter. Winter doesn't happen that way. It comes by degrees, and it's warmer one day, and then colder one day, and warmer the next day, and then it's a lot colder the next day. So something that happens sort of settles in slowly. Close to settles in. You could say settles in, as a matter of fact, here. Uh, hang about, of course, is to stay. Uh, Carmen, do you, do you like it when winter hangs about? <laughs> I don't like winter at all, so... <laughs> okay. Well, if, if winter hangs about, that means it's, you know, spring is late. That's what it means. <laughs> it's very simple. And we, we never use the phrasal verb falls off with winter. Winter falls off doesn't really make sense. If something falls off, it decreases. But we, we don't ever use that in conjunction with winter. Uh, Anna, back to you, number five. <clears throat> yes. Um, some supporters, uh, supporters uh, were blank at the at the entrance um, because the ground was full. Hmm. Uh, maybe um, set out. 
Uh, no, uh, set out again, uh, as in before. Set out means to begin. So some supporters were started at the, or to start. S started at the entrance. That doesn't really work. Mm, yes. Uh, um, in this case, I I thought uh, uh, um, set out uh, could meaning um, like a uh, um, recollocate more or less. Uh, oh, okay. I see. And actually, okay, I forgot about that meaning. You can set out your nice china, uh, your lovely dishes because you're having a fancy dinner party. So you can put them out in a public place. But we, we don't use set out for human beings. You set out things that you want people to see. Uh, okay, so kind of similar in that way. But... Uh, but in that way, we don't use it for people. Um, you can, oh, I, are you thinking some supporters were spread out? Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. But either way, we don't, we don't have spread out here. Do you have another guess? I, in, yes, I suppose it, it would be possible sent off, but I, I'm not sure. Well, uh, A is very, very close. But B is much more likely. Turned away. Uh, the ground was full. Uh, meaning, there. Are, I suppose this is uh, whatever. Some kind of venue. Some kind of stadium or arena. And it's full. There's no room for no, any more human beings. You can't go in. There are no more seats. In most countries, it is illegal to put a, any more than a designated amount that usually the fire department decides you're allowed to have a thousand people maximum in this building. After that, you have to turn people away at the door. Turn them away. Mm -hmm. They want to come in. You turn them around and say, no, you can't come in. That's yes, it. Yes. They're, they're turned away. Sent off is similar, but you're sent off. I, I'm going to send off I'm going to send my wife off to the store to get some milk because I want to make milkshakes later and I'm working. So you send somebody off, you send them away, you, but you're not, I'm not turning her away, I'm sending her to get something. Okay, do you see okay. the difference? Turned away, it just means you can't come in. I don't care where you go. <laughs> it makes no difference to me where you go, but you can't come in. You're turned away. Uh, okay. Okay, and thank you, teacher. You're welcome. And then a played off doesn't make any sense. It has to do with sports, but a playoff uh, in sports involves seeing who's the champion. Okay, this winner plays that winner, and that winner of that plays the other winner, and finally there's only one winner left, and those are playoffs, uh, which makes no sense in reference to supporters. Uh, okay. Next one, Zingyu, number six. Number six. The show is so the show is so popular that it's uh, blank for weeks ahead. It's uh, booked up. Mm-hmm. It's booked up for weeks ahead. Now, okay. Here we find something interesting with the phrasal verb. Another one with up, which basically, when we add up, it both adds emphasis and it, and it has a connotation, an understood meaning of completely. So it would be perfectly okay and grammatically correct and normal to say it's booked for weeks ahead. Fine. It, it's all the reservations are taken. There's no tickets available. Fine. No problem. By saying booked up, we're adding a little emphasis, and we're saying we're, it's booked completely, entirely. There's not one open spot. We're emphasizing completely. Same thing. We uh, 
when we use phrases like clean up, clean up your room. Uh, when I say clean up your room, I mean clean it up completely. He messed up the whole deal. He completely ruined the whole deal. There's a there's a certain connotation of entirely, completely. Uh, okay. Teacher. Yeah. My choice is right. Your choice. Uh, my choice. answer is right. Your choice. The noun. Choice. Your choice is correct. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Booked means reserved. Yeah. Booked up completely. Right. Um, it would make no sense if it was so popular they shut it down. That makes no sense. They close it. <laughs> they absolutely close it. Uh, uh, so that would make no sense. Something shut down. It's not open to the public. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's put out for weeks ahead. Again, put out can mean produced, but that's you, you, a show is not a toothbrush. You can't produce it weeks before it's needed. It's <laughs> that, that's not very logical at all. Uh, okay, checked in also doesn't make sense. Checked in, I think, is um, people check in to a hotel room. You book a hotel room, but the hotel is booked up. There's no room, um, and we don't have a. Uh, we don't have anything like checked. It's completely checked. We have no way to say completely. There's everybody's checked in. To check in, that's what that's what the patron does. The patron checks in when he goes into a hotel. Before he gets to the hotel, he books a room. So related but different actions. Okay, uh, moving on. Paco, number seven. Okay. The committee wants us to mm -mm -mm, the entertainment for the social evening. I agree. <laughs> Maybe lay on. The committee wants us to lay on the entertainment for the social evening. Ah, this is okay. This is uh, quite interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. This is, this is interesting because we got some more British American things going on. All right. From my perspective, as an American, I like your answer, Paco, because um, to lay it on, lay it on, or to lay on the compliments is to kind of overdo it. Um, if we're going to, and we use this in conjunction, uh, in co-located with entertainment. Okay, he really laid it on out there. All right. Talking about an entertainer. They kind of do more than is expected. Uh, and so we, we also use that adverb, really lay it on. Um, oh, okay. So for me, that actually works perfectly fine. I kind of like it. Uh, okay, if anything, overdo the entertainment for the evening. All right, it can't be B because to sit on something is to quash it to uh, um, to not make it public. That wouldn't make sense. You wouldn't sit on the entertainment. That means you're not going to tell anybody who the entertainment is, which is ridiculous would be the opposite thing you wanted to do. Um, the committee want us to put down the entertainment. Put down what? On a piece of paper? Put down can mean write. Or for Americans, put down can, again, mean to deride or demoralize or talk bad about someone. So, again, that wouldn't make sense. It's very negative. Or okay. put down can mean write. But that doesn't make sense. Yes, Carmen? But but I think to put down you can you can uh, um, use it in a sense that to organize something. I'm not quite sure about that, but but I think it's not just to to put down a tree or something or to put down 
you know, a, 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 an animal to sleep. But I mean, I think <laughs> it's so you can use it as um, when you want to organize something or something has been uh, um, um, assigned to, to you to to finalize it, like put it down on paper. That idea, you mean? No, like organizing something, an event, for instance. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I think so. I'm not quite sure about it, but well. Uh, you may no, be right. You might be right, but Americans never use it that way. Um, okay. Uh, so it's completely alien to me. Um, uh, okay, I put it down. On, we do have the concept, American. Okay. Um, put it on paper. We don't say put it down on paper. Well, we do. If all right, put it in writing. We say to make finalize it. Okay, put it in writing, and I'll sign it. Um, meaning. Um, to uh, to write it and that finalizes it. So to that aspect, okay, maybe you're right. Um, if it is, I don't know anything about that. I've never heard mm -hmm. of that. Um, okay, uh, hmm, maybe I, I don't know. Um, hmm. And for instance, would you use it? For instance, if you got a um, a dog that is uh, that is sick. And um, you take him to the vet and says, oh, I mean, he's going to die. So can you just give him a, 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 a dab, just put him down? We use it like that, like that too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, yeah, there's, okay, this is one of those phrasal verbs that has multiple meanings. You, um, what is the more formal word? Euthanize, that's it. You, you hmm. euthanize uh, a, a, an animal. You wouldn't mm -hmm. euthanize your your grandmother, for example. That would be horrible. Okay. Uh, so okay, let's 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 go through this again. Hang on. It, it can mean to euthanize like an animal. It can mean to write down, to put down, to write it down on a list. Uh, it can mean you put down a rebellion, you end or repress, which of course would never fit our our uh, our sentence here. You could uh, put down a rumor, uh, also to repress or end a rumor. Uh, put down is to, again to criticize, humiliate, or disparage someone. Um, Okay, we can put someone down as being a liar. I, you know what? I put him down as being a liar. Here's another use. Um, I, I put President Obama down as being kind of a wimp. It means I categorize him. Let's put it down to experience. There's a common phrase that's very similar. Uh, okay, let's attribute this or assign this to experience, put it down to experience, very common. Um, put down can also mean to eat. I, he put down three cheeseburgers for lunch, for example. Uh, what I, I don't know anything about put down used to I could be wrong, but I, I couldn't find. I didn't find anything looking for definitions about this that has to do with. Um, I don't know, securing entertainment, securing something. I, I can't find anything about that. Um, and, our, and our last one here, settle down. I, I think. I think this is actually the answer. Um, and I think so, not because I'm even familiar with it. Uh, as I'm really not, because Americans don't use it, uh, we use settle on, means make a choice. Uh, so, hmm, uh, as an American I would say settle on, the most likely answer to me would be the one that's not, I want to settle on the entertainment. Ah, okay, I see. To assign someone to some task. All right, I guess you're right. 
We put John down to do the laundry, Mary to do the dishes. You can put me down for $20. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Okay, similar to the idea of write me down. All right, sign me up. Okay, Americans would say sign me up. You can put it in writing, the idea that you write something that makes it official. I guess it's the same idea. Okay. All right, I guess the answer is put down, but I will tell you that uh, you would never hear that from an American, just so you know. And an American would have no idea what you're talking about. The, um, the committee want us to settle on the entertainment for the social evening would be the way that an American would likely say it. Um, yeah, it sounds very weird. Put down the entertainment. Maybe it's just a bad example. I, I understand your example. Put me down for a $20 donation. That sounds very normal to me. That means write me down for a $20 donation. Your other examples, we put John down for the laundry and Mary to do the dishes. I assume that means you're writing it down so it is officially assigned. That's my assumption. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so not only, for at least for my American brain, it not only means to assign someone, it means you're actually making it official and writing it down. So this example here makes no sense to me, really. I guess, kind of. All right, let's move on. Whatever. All right, kind of a, a weird one. Uh, all right, let's move on. Number eight. Uh, Carmen, number eight. It was such a bad foul. How do you pronounce this? Foul? Foul. 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 That the referee sent him off. That one because he has shown the, the player a, a red card, so he sent him off. <laughs> yep. Exactly. So he sent him off. Like we saw sent off. Okay. You're. All right. Well, usually you send someone off to get something, but all right. Specifically, this is very much related to the sport. Yeah, uh, I guess. So That's it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, maybe hockey. Well, no. Uh, no, not really. You can be ejected from all kinds of games. Basketball, American football, hockey. He was ejected from the game. This is the only one, you're right, uh, soccer is the only one where we actually say he was sent off. So, okay, all right. Obviously, the referee didn't cut him up. That <laughs> He pulled out a knife and cut him up. Did him up, makes no sense. Used him up, uh, also, I don't understand that. Again, up, being used to show completely. He completely used him. He completely cut him. He completely did him. I don't think so. It's a little strange. Okay, Anna, how about number nine? Yes, if the rain, mm, we might still be able to play the match. Uh, is this up? Yeah. Eases, if you ease, you ease on... You ease up on the gas, you you bring your foot up, and you you go less fast. So um, we even say ease up on somebody. You know, don't don't yell at Charlie so much. You need to ease up on him. He's had a really rough couple weeks. He just got a divorce. He's having a hard time. Ease up on him a little bit. All right, apply less pressure or to lessen something. Ease up. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Hi, Ethan. Oopsie. <laughs> what happened? Wrong click. Whew. Uh, okay. Um, all right. What, what else here? Ease is up. Sets off again. All right. Sets off. You start. <laughs> you set off. You begin. Usually a trip. Uh, actual motion. You set off to go somewhere. Or you start something. We already talked about that. Hots up. Here's another one. Americans say heat up. Not we. 
Americans would never say hots up. Uh, and you could be talking about physical temperature or somebody becoming angry or something becoming more hostile. The argument heated up. Uh, oh, let's get out of here before the argument hots up. So British say it slightly different, but same idea. Um, fire away. <laughs> fire meaning shoot. Go ahead. Shoot. Fire away. Could mean, uh, all right, if I ask you to talk, you have a question? Go ahead. Fire away, I might say to you. Uh, all right. Um, Zingyu, number 10. Number 10. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Number 10. Yeah. The band Blank and the dancers made their way to the floor. The band. The band. Stick. Stick. Strike. Struck. Spark. Uh, struck. Up. Struck up. Okay. Very good. Uh, struck, of course, being the past tense of strike. Right. Okay. The, uh, very good. The band struck up. Or started. What else can you strike up? Do you know? We commonly co-locate this with just two or three object nouns. The, the, you strike up the band. What else can you strike up, Zingyu? Do you know anything? You might strike up. Strike up uh, a conversation. Perfect. Strike up a... Uh, mm, strike up a... Uh, the friendship. Mm, possibly. Okay. Yeah. But that one's much more rare. Strike up a conversation, very common. Strike up the band. Okay, that's common. You can strike up a match as well. Very physical. You strike a match. Strike <laughs> up a, a romantic relationship with a beautiful woman. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Okay. Possibly. Uh, <laughs> good one. Uh, okay. Played off. We already talked about struck out. Pretty much the opposite of what Zingyu just said. <laughs> if you strike out a romantic relationship with a beautiful woman, <laughs> then, of course, uh, okay, you're not doing too good. Strike out is be unsuccessful at something. Uh, this comes, this is related to American baseball. You strike out. It's not good. It's negative. It's never good. Beat out. Okay. If you beat someone out, you defeat them. You win in a competition. Uh, okay, so that, that doesn't make much sense to beat the band beat out. Uh, beat out who? Uh, okay. Um, notice that the band struck up and the dancers made their way to the floor. This is also an interesting phrasal verb. They struck up the band and the dancers, I could say it that way. It's interesting, this particular phrasal verb, because it can take an object or not take an object. Either way. Usually it's kind of one or the other. Uh, okay, Paco, how about number 11? Okay. When the applause had died down, the star of the show said a few words. Okay. Correct? That died is down? Totally, yeah, very good. That's absolutely correct. Um, very good. So slowly it faded away. It died down. Something dies down. Many things can die down. The... The rumors died down after a while. Enthusiasm for the band died down, whatever. 
many things can slowly fade away. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the applause played through, of course, that would make no sense. You, you play through is a, another, okay, that's a sports-related phrasal verb, but it's related. Does anybody know what sport is play through related to? One specific sport. Really, there's only one sport you could use this with. It's quite specific. No? No golfers in the room today. I don't know. Okay. Mm, Golf. Sorry. Uh, mm, I, I don't know exactly, but it could be um, a hobby playthrough. I know. There's really no. only one use that I know. I could be wrong again. I don't know everything. But um, it has to do with golf. If there's, if you're on a golf course and the people in front of you are 127 years old and they're really slow and they may let you play through. I hope they let you play through. In other words, they'll stop and wait and you can go ahead of them and play the next hole. Okay, so you play through. You might ask them, it would be very common, do you mind if we play through? Because they're really, really slow, either really bad golfers or they're really old or whatever. So you play through. Um, gone out, what? When the applause had gone out. Oh, okay, well, all right. Gone out may be similar to died down. The fire went out fire had gone out. Uh, okay, something ends completely. It goes out, not fades away, but completely ends. But you would never use that co-located with applause. Fire can go out. Sure, the power can go out. The electricity can go out. Sure, but not applause. When something goes out, it goes out like the electricity. It's on, boom, it's off, like that. Suddenly. Uh, okay. Step forward makes no sense here. Step forward means to volunteer. So, absolutely no sense. Uh, okay, Carmen, how about number 12? I have to keep new things for the children to do during the holiday. They got, they got bored so easily. I don't have any idea about this one. Okay. Acting. Well, well, it has to do with creating. Uh, acting up? I mean, like, uh, invent something just to keep them... Well, the idea is exactly inventing something, but the correct mm -hmm. answer is dreaming up. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. right. uh, exactly the idea, though. Yeah, inventing something. I had to keep dreaming up new things. They're always dreaming up new inventions over at Google. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, you run down or chase down uh, new thing. You chase down things. You you have to <laughs> one way or another pursue them. Uh, Okay, uh, it's really hard to run down Paul. He's very busy. He's a busy architect. He goes from site to site. It's hard to run him down. Or you might have to run down information. So something you have to search for and hunt for. Run down closely associated with the idea of hunting. Uh, okay, act up. Well, act up is an interesting phrasal verb. Children, when they misbehave, they act up. The children are acting up. I'm going to have to bring them home early. Uh, okay, and pass through, you know, just to go through something, either physical or abstract. You pass through a hard time in your life or you pass through a tunnel, uh, abstract okay. or physical. So when you say the children, for instance, they are acting up because they are misbehaving. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. And it's when they really misbehave bad and it's embarrassing and you have to, you know, go home early and 
<laughs> like that. You okay. tend to use that word. Yeah, all right, you know what I mean. All right. Yeah. You feel like saying that to your own cake. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Anna, how about number 13? Okay, uh, Maggie's been uh, uh, working on her game, and you can see a definite improvement. Okay, a definite improvement. Mm -hmm. Definite. Pr practicing, working on whatever, and we could say different things. She's working on her golf swing. She's working on... All right. Her English. Hmm. Yes, right. yes. <laughs> sure. Okay, there you go. Uh, sitting for her game, I don't even, that makes no sense at all. I don't even think that's, well, I guess it's a phrasal verb. You sit for, <laughs> what do you sit for? I won't sit for it. Uh, okay. I won't endure it. I won't sit for it. A little odd to have here. It has nothing to do with that. Check in, we already discussed, try on, you try on clothing. <laughs> so, that doesn't make much sense either. Oh, okay, just one thing. Do you use to, to sit for, for instance, when you're doing an exam? I'm going to sit for an exam. Oh, yeah, Do you that's use it that right. way? That's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay, you're right. You're absolutely right, and I, I'm right. I forgot about that one. I tend to forget about the ones that Americans never use, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> because Americans never use that. Uh, Americans never, never use it. No, okay. we would never say, I need to sit for the SATs on Saturday. Uh, we wouldn't say mm -hmm. that. We'd just say, I need okay. to take the SATs on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right, though. British do use that quite frequently. Uh, okay. Uh, Zinya, number 14. The match was uh, was rained off and will be played next Wednesday. All right. And similar to your snowed off, which I didn't even recognize, rained off, snowed off, very British. Uh, Americans would always say rained out or snowed out. Um, strangely, we don't really say snowed out, uh, actually. So which was harder for me to even recognize. We just choose to say it another way. Uh, it was called off due to snow. You know, it's a different phrasal verb. So, okay, rained out. Not poured out just is the actual physically you pour out iced tea from the pitcher. You pour out coffee from the coffee pot, physical. Um, or, actually, no, you could pour out your heart to someone. You could explain all your emotional problems, but that's more of a very specific idiom. She poured her heart out. Pour out. Yeah, okay. Uh, if the match was seen through, that means despite difficulties, they continued. So that doesn't make any sense here because then you wouldn't need to reschedule it if it was seen through. That means they finished it. And uh, although the rain can pelt down, and we commonly use this to describe a very hard rain, this is very physical. You can describe other things, all right? Um, the crowd was angry and empty bottles pelted down. <laughs> onto the field. Okay, anything coming down hard and fast. Uh, okay, we got about 10 minutes left to do a little mix and match here. Match an item on the left with an item on the right. Each item will only be used once. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. All right, that'll do. Uh, okay. Oops. Uh, all right. Here we go. Okay. So, continuing. Uh, Paco, number one, which ending would match many cinemas? Okay. Many cinemas closed down when television became popular. 
Very good. So they closed down. They stopped forever. They closed the doors. Uh, okay, very good. Carmen, number two. The cotton. Ah, uh, came down on the booing the gun. No? <laughs> yeah. You see me subtly open that up for you. Yeah, the curtain came down. Um, okay, the concept, I hear I should add the concept of the curtains coming down or the curtains falling in English always means the end of something. If I say it's curtains for you, I mean it's the end for you. All right. Uh, okay. So at the end of a show, the curtains come down. All right. And obviously they didn't like it. The booing. They didn't like the show. <laughs> Clearly not. So that it came down here literally means the curtains actually physically came down. All right. Uh, next one, Anna? Yes, yes. Um, the dance uh, catch on, and soon everyone was doing it. Ah, okay. So what does that mean, if the dance caught on? Mm, uh, cap on is like... Um, mm, I I don't know explain, but uh, it's like um, um, they um, it uh, likes uh, very much. Um, you yeah. you are um, catch catch uh, <laughs> by the by the dance. <laughs> uh, okay, what Carmen's saying is it, it was catchy. No, it doesn't have to. It, uh, okay, it, it happens to be a dance, but um, let's see. Uh, okay, in the 1960s, um, mini skirts caught on for a short time at the end of the 60s. They became popular, trendy. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Music can be catchy, uh, the kind of music that you. You know, you start singing it or you start tapping your foot because it's catchy. Sure, but uh, that has really nothing to do with a phrasal verb in this case. Uh, sing you number, sing you number four, please. Number four, the the golfers, the golfers. Mm. Mm, I don't know. No idea? No idea. Okay, no golfers today. I can see that. You guys don't know any of the golfer words. All right, the golfers teed off. Mm. Both played terrible shots. The first shot on each hole, the action that they hit, whack, the first time they hit the ball is, is the tee shot, and they tee off. That's the action. Uh, okay, you talk about your our tee off time is 7:30 a.m. That's the time we're first going to hit the ball. We're, we have reservations to begin playing golf at the tee off time. So, okay, what does it mean if I say, "Oh my gosh, my wife is really teed off." My wife is very angry. That's right. You know, that's absolutely correct. If someone is teed off, they're like that ball that's just been hit really, really hard. <laughs> and they're really angry. Okay, very good. Uh, Paco, membership. Mm. Membership fell off when another club opened it. Okay, fell off, dropped off, it lessened. Yep, pretty straightforward on that one. Okay, good job. Uh, Carmen, number six. Uh, the music blared out and we couldn't hear ourselves speak. All right, blared out is it's too, very loud. It's a strike up. 
Well, I'll strike up, but to, if it blared out, there's a definite meaning that it was extremely loud and maybe even mm -hmm. slightly disord distorted, not clear. Just too loud, so loud it's not even clear. Uh, if you've ever heard, um, whatever, announcements blaring out, um, I don't know, in the train station or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jason Jones was sacked seven rounds from the other And you can't even understand what they're saying. No. Absolutely. Yeah, hmm. well, yeah, I think probably uh, we've all experienced that. Anna, number seven. Yes, um, the musicians uh, turned up and waited for the conductor to arrive. Indeed. Uh, tune up, very, very specific phrasal verb. Obviously, you tune up an instrument, you get it in the right pitch, right? Yes. Right. Can you, do you know how to tune up an instrument, Anna? I I I am not, but my older son is musician, and he plays uh, the bass. Ah, okay. The I know it looks like bass in English, but it's actually pronounced bass. Ah, okay. sorry, <laughs> bass. It's okay. Bass. Okay. Uh, it, it certainly looks like that. But it is a homophone. They sound exactly the same. Bass, B-A-S-S, -S, and bass, B-A-S-E. However, and I have to say, um, B-A-S-S, -S, when it's a fish, which it is, it's a certain specific type of fish, is then a bass, as you say it. So the okay. same word, same spelling, if you mean a fish, it's bass. If you mean the instrument, it's bass. Bass. Crazy. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Uh, Zingy, last one. The two teams. The two teams uh, played off to decide the third place. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, all right. The winner gets the position, playoffs, the playoffs, all, pretty much all sports have playoffs, okay, you have to keep winning in order to keep playing and ultimately there's a champion. That system of playing the other winner is, it was, those are called playoffs. Okay, uh, thank you very much everyone, thanks a lot for your participation uh, and your help. I'll see you next time here on Verbling. Thanks a lot.